In my last video regarding the loading of 38 Smith & Wesson, I kind of took you through the process of making the projectile, and then I made a dummy round, uh, which works uh, pretty well as far as I can tell. Uh, good measurements uh, overall, and uh, things look pretty good there. But I had a problem with the uh, actual component. The expander die uh, did not work according to what I had planned and, and in, was not to standard uh, for what I needed to do. Um, the pilot here on here, the pilot and the expander together, were, uh, which are, are immovable on this aluminum stud they provided, really is only for 38 caliber. It's not uh, made with the intention of expanding the case enough to seat the .361 bullet in it. So what I ended up having to do was to attempt to replace that, and, and in so doing, I made an entire new solid uh, expander pilot, and the tip of this is now to uh, .362, so that a .361 bullet will seat correctly in it. And uh, that took some doing, and there were some problems with the steel. I want to point out that uh, this is made of 4140, and at the end of this presentation you'll see how I made it. But uh, before I forget, uh, anytime you're getting ready to make something out of steel, and you have any reason to doubt, uh, have any doubts whether it's annealed or, or not, be sure to anneal it, because um, this steel turned out to be pretty hard even though it was marked annealed. So that's an important step if you're into machining at all. A lot of you aren't, and it's not that important, so I'm not going to bore you with the machining until the end if you really want to see that. What I do want to talk about is what you're going to need to have um, in order to, to build this round. Now, it's a little more complicated than you think, and I'm not going to cover the projectile uh, this time. I'm only going to talk about uh, the actual setup. And these dies turned out to be kind of a disappointment. I, I would date them from about 1961 or 60 uh, in that time frame. Um, I don't think that uh, they're not bad, but there's a little bit lacking. They don't have a roll crimp free, uh, feature built into it. Uh, so that's something else to kind of think about. This round needs a little bit of roll crimp, so I think I can actually cheat a little and use uh, the 38 special uh, dies that I have, and then I should be able to get a little bit of a roll in there. Anyhow, let's go ahead and uh, talk about um, what we're really looking at here. And this is a, a 38 special case. I did not yet cut it down. And I used the new expander uh, to get the point three six two dimension in there that I need. And um, by difference, this uh, is about three five one or three five two. It it just it's it's really not uh, it's not made to to do the job. There's a little step on it that's exactly three six two, and this prepared round will actually go up on that step now, if you can see that. Um, you can see what I mean. So it's a little hard to see, but there's a step, and then there's a fence, you might call, uh, that, uh, so that the, the case will not go beyond there. And if it did, it would be damaged. And by contrast, a non-processed 38 special case will stop before it hits this point three six two, And the whole thing behind this is, let's put this aside, um, that if you try to seat a bullet that has, is point three six one, in, into a case that's not ready for it, then it'll shave the lead off. And that's the whole thing we're getting at. I'm not going to force this on there. And I'm not going to make another round this time. I've got the one dummy. So I'm happy with that. But these are some things that you should know when you get ready to work with uh, 38 Smith & Wesson, if you ever do. Uh, I would say get some dies other than these. And uh, if you do hit problems with, uh, you know, the expansion, um, then that could be an issue. I don't know uh, if that's in the cards. But uh, at this point, and since I've told you about some of the machining, you can now go ahead and take a look at that. Like 18 threads per inch, that's just what I need. Let's see if we can thread this on there. Oh, 
should go. Okay, and then I'll have to finish it up here. So the next phase um, of this is to get down to 0.362 on the very end here. And then to go ahead and, uh, you know, neural that and cut off. Making good progress with this to compare the two parts, one that uh, came originally on the top there and the bottom, the one I've made. The uh, pilot is now exactly 0.362 and the way it will work now is you can see that this unformed 38 special case is just starting to, to move on to the pilot whereas with the old one the pilot is so loose that this just goes right on there and doesn't do any good. There's a little fence you might say built into this so that uh, the case can't travel beyond. There's a, a big line and a little line. So I've replicated that. And I'm not going to use any force right now because uh, I want to do this right. After this part is cut off, then, uh, then we'll get around to demonstrating it. But that just shows you uh, where I'm at. And probably didn't even need to go that far because I think what I could have done is just built the separate pilot here. Ah. 